What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp woodworking tutorial for you. So in this video I wanted to walk you through some of the basics of creating and modeling a bookcase in SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I, I kind of wanted to use this video as a way to talk through some basic principles and things that are going to make your uh, life a little bit easier when uh, you're working with modeling something like a bookcase. So, um, so first of all what we're going to do is you can delete out whatever your default model is um, in your SketchUp model. So um, I'm going to delete this out, and then the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to kind of start modeling. And what we're going to what we're going to model is we're going to model out our side panels first. And so the thing we're going to do is there's two ways you could do this. You could either draw with the line tool. And you could model what you're looking for, or you could use the rectangle tool. And so to use the rectangle tool, all you would do is you would tap the R key, and then uh, you'd want to go ahead and tap probably the right arrow key. You can see how when I tap the right arrow key, that locks this to the red axis. Well, then I can come in here and I can tell this, uh, I can tell this both the depth and the height that I'm going for. So in this case, let's say I wanted this to be 12 inches deep by 72 inches high. I just type in 12 comma 72 and hit the enter key and then if I come in here and I dimension this then this is going to be a 72 inch high or a six foot high by one foot deep wood panel so and then what we're going to do is we're going to use the push pull tool to extrude this and give it a little bit of depth so I'm just going to activate the push pull tool by tapping the P key and then uh, I'm just going to type in three quarters of an inch and uh, I'm going to hit the enter key and you can see how that extruded this to three quarters of an inch deep. Well now what we're going to do is we're going to select this object, we're going to right click on it, and we're going to make this a component. And this is kind of the first thing I wanted to talk about, is you're going to want to use groups and components in your model as much as possible to keep them organized. Because if you don't do that, then A, all of your geometry is going to merge. But B, it gets really hard to get back in here and make changes, move things around, get the different parts and pieces that you want, that sort of thing. So make sure you're modeling this with components. In this case, we're just going to call this um, an end panel. And you see how this box down here called Replace Selection with Component is checked? Make sure that's checked and then go ahead and click Create. And so there's a place in your tray where you can manage all this stuff called the outliner. So if you go in the outliner, it's in your tray. If you can't see your tray, go to window, default tray, and make sure show tray is checked. And also make sure the box for the outliner is checked. But you can see how now when this is in here, um, I can tell that this is my end panel. So if I double click in this, you can see how SketchUp goes inside this group. So if I click on this, or inside this component, so if I click on this, you can see how the whole thing is selected. That means this is this is either a group or a component. And then whenever I click on it over here, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to select that object. Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to use the Move tool to make a copy of this object. So I'm going to activate the Move tool by tapping the M key. Well, I'm going to select my object. I'm going to activate the Move tool by tapping my M key. And I'm going to click on this corner. And you can see how when I click on this corner, it's moving this object. Well, what I want to do is I want to tap the control key to put this in copy mode. And then once I put this in copy mode, once I put this in copy mode, you can see how this is creating a copy of this object. And you can see how down in the corner, um, my distance is moving as I move my mouse. Well, what I want to do is I'm going to type in 36 inches and hit the enter key. What that does is that creates a copy of this object 36 inches over. So now that we've got that, what we can do is we can come in here and we can draw a rectangle across the top of this object. So just tap the R key to activate the rectangle tool, click on this corner, and then move your mouse over here. And you can see how that draws a rectangle across this piece. Well, what we want to do is we want to use the push-pull tool to give it some thickness. So again, we're just going to call this 3 quarters of an inch. And what I'm going to do, because you can see how this is made up of different faces right now, well, all I'm going to do is I'm going to triple click. And when I triple click, that's going to select everything in this object. So you can see how the whole thing is selected. Well, now I can right click on this and make this a component as well. And so in this case, what I can call this is I can call this top panel. And I realize there's probably some more technical terms for this, but you can you can call these whatever you want to keep them organized. Well, now you can see you've got two end panels and a top panel. 
in your bookcase. Well, and you can see how now you don't want to take this object and make a copy of it down because it's too big. So you can see how it's too large to actually fit in this space. Now there's a couple different things you could do about that if you wanted to. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come down here and I'm going to use, I'm going to use some guides in order to model out my base piece. So I'm kind of figuring the way this would go is the first shelf on here would start about four to six inches up. Um, so I'd probably have some kind of like toe kick board in here just to kind of protect it um, to have kind of a piece of trim and also to protect it down at the bottom. But what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to draw a rectangle inside this base. I'm going to push pull it to give it my thickness. And then I'm going to make this a component and I'm just going to call this shelf just shelf and hit the enter key. Well now what I have in here is I have an object called shelf, but I don't want it to be on the ground, so I'm going to use the move tool to move it up probably about four inches. And so you can see how now I've got this kind of gap in here, and we'll come back in and we'll fill that in in a second. But right now we've got our gap in here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I'm going to create a guide. It's just to kind of uh, space out my shelving. So I'm going to figure, I'm going to activate the tape measure tool and come down here and click on this line and you can see how when I move my mouse up it's creating a guideline. I mean a guideline is just a basically a dotted line in here that doesn't merge with any geometry but I can basically put this in here at different heights so in this case I'm going to create a 12 inch guideline from there. So there's a couple different things you can do here. Um, you can either use your guide to create a couple copies so you can select this bottom piece by clicking on it and you can use the move tool in copy mode to create a few different copies. So you can just, uh, again, select this object, activate the move tool by clicking on this corner piece, um, tap the control key, and then click on this piece. Well, what you can do is you can type in times two or times three or even more and hit the enter key in order to create multiple copies. So. If I type in times five, it's going to create five copies. And you can see how that creates a little bit of a spacing issue up here. So we don't necessarily want that. So I'm going to go back in and you can see how I'm not clicking on anything, but I can type in times two and hit the enter key. And you can see how that's actually removing the copies that I made, but that basically created two copies evenly spaced from this bottom piece. Well, what we're going to do here is I'm actually going to move this up and I'm actually gonna move it into this piece right here. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I'm gonna use the divide tool to create some uh, equally spaced copies. So not only can this create uh, multiplications or multiple copies, it can also create objects spaced evenly between two points. So in this case, what I would do is I would activate the move tool in copy mode. I would move this up so it's actually inside this piece. And then I would type in divided by three and hit the enter key. And what that did is that created three equally spaced copies between this point and this point. And if you don't like that, if you want them to be closer together, you can type in divided by four, divided by five. You can basically create as many copies as you want in here. You could do divided by 50. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but you can definitely do that. So in this case, I'm probably gonna do a divided by four. So what I've got is I've got some shelves down here. They have some kind of smaller or bigger spacing and then some kind of smaller spacings up here. So that'll give me my different shelves. And the nice thing about these is if you remember, we created these as components. So if you were to come in here and you wanted to make these thicker, you can see how since they're all copies of that same component, if you made one thicker, you could make them all thicker. So it's really easy to come in there and make changes. And the one thing you may wanna do, because we did make a copy inside this top piece is delete out that copy up there. But you can see how now what you have is you have a basic bookshelf um, that's all organized over here. So you can find your shelves easily. You can find your end panels easily. You know, and one thing I might do, and not, not everybody does this, but you can come in here and you can group these in the outliner. So you can group your components and then you can rename your group and you can call this shelves. You could group these and you could rename them and you could call them end panels. 
and then you can come in here and you can minimize all this stuff so it's really easy to find your different parts and pieces you can see how when you click on these it's gonna select them for you so you can get in here and you can adjust your individual pieces um, you can get to all this stuff by keeping it organized in your outliner so and the next thing we want to do real quick is we're gonna come in here and we're going to create some trim pieces so probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my in trim pieces first. And so all I'm going to do to do that is I'm just going to, going to come in here and I'm going to activate the rectangle tool. So I'm going to tap the R key. And then I'm just going to move my mouse up to this top piece right here. And you can see how down in the lower right hand corner you can see the dimensions in here. I can use that, whoops, I can use that to really easily figure out what dimensions I need. So in this case, this is actually small enough where I can move this and you can see the numbers changing in the corner. I can actually move this until I get the dimension that I want, but you can also type that in. So in this case, I want six foot three quarters of an inch by an inch and a half. And then again, all you're gonna do is you're gonna push pull that out to whatever thickness you've got these pieces at. And then you can triple click on that. And again, you can make it a component. You can call it whatever you want. Um, I'm going to call this tall trim piece and then you're going to use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy just like we have been this whole time. So you'll have those tall pieces over here. And then same thing, you can figure out how tall you want this little hang down piece to be and you can see how I can move my mouse until this gives me the dimensions that I want. So let's say I wanted this to be three inches. Um, I just activate the rotate or uh, the rectangle tool, draw a rectangle across here until I get the dimensions that I want. And then you can just push pull this out so it's the same thickness on this face. And then I'm gonna triple click on that. I'm gonna make this, in this case, I'm gonna make this a group because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be using another top trim piece, but we can go ahead and just come in here and call that top trim piece and then we can use the move tool to make a copy down and you can see how I can lock this to the blue axis by holding the shift key so if I if I make a copy of this along this axis and then I hold the shift key you can see how I can move this up and down and it'll lock this to the blue axis so as soon as this gets on the blue axis like this, if you hold shift, it's going to lock it to that up and down axis. And then I can move this copy down here. And then what I can do, because I didn't make this a component, is I can edit this one individually and I can just push pull this piece down until it meets the ground. Just like that. So now you've got your basic bookcase piece. And again, remember to come in here and you can see how since I made a copy, this retained the same name. We're just going to rename this bottom trim piece. And again, this, this is just uh, one of those things where if you keep this organized, then it's really easy to find the parts and pieces that you want in your model. You definitely don't have to do it this way. I like to do it this way because I like keeping things organized. So, and then the last thing you could do if you wanted to, and this is definitely kind of an optional step, but um, if you wanted to, if you wanted like a trim piece along this perimeter, I talked about this a little bit last week, but you can actually use the follow me tool in order to create that. So what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna draw a little canvas. So, and a canvas is just a little rectangular piece that you can come in here and you can draw on. So I'm gonna set this I'm going to create a little canvas piece and it doesn't matter how big it is because we're just going to come in here and we're just going to draw the profile of what our base piece would look like. So in this case, let's say we have a simple profile for our base piece. So and again, if you remember the profile is just what, what your piece would look like if you uh, were to cut it. Um, straight across the face and uh, I'll leave a link to the follow me tool tutorial that I did last week for this But all we're gonna do is we're just gonna draw a quick path So a path is just drawing a line around this face 
so that we can select it. So all I did is I drew a line here, a line here, and a line here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select that line, or those three lines, by doing a shift click. And that's us telling it, this is the path I want you to extrude this piece along. We're gonna come over here to the Follow Me tool, which can be found in the Large tool set. And then we're gonna click on this face. And you can see how what that did is that extruded this base piece all the way along that path. So it took that profile and it extruded it along that face. And so the only thing I don't like about that is that brought that in here with the back face, the darker face showing outward. So I'm just gonna triple click on that to select the whole thing. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click reverse faces. And so now what you've got is you've got this bookcase with this trim piece around the bottom. And you could do the same thing up here at the top if you wanted to as well. But again, remember to triple click on this, right click and make it a group and just name this base trim. And so if you use this strategy, you can basically model anything you want. You can use this for cabinets, you can use this for basically anything. But this is a real good way to just real quickly keep your model organized, uh, make it easily editable, and also to be able to create all the parts and pieces that you want. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider visiting my support me page on my website. That's the sketchupessentials.com support. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.